Joining us now to better understand the debate regarding lockdown orders is Max Nelson. He's the Labor Policy Director from the Freedom Foundation. So, Max, when we look at the West Coast in particular, I know that's what you focus on, and that's where California, for example, is at the center of this attention when we're talking about lockdown orders. What is the status out there? I know that Governor Gavin Newsom said that more restrictions were coming, possibly some in Washington as well. What's the status on the West Coast? Well, Alex, it's starting to feel a lot like spring out here on the West Coast, and I, I don't say that in a good way. Uh, feels like we're back where we were uh, earlier this year. Uh, the governors in Washington, Jay Inslee, and then Kate Brown in Oregon, and of course Gavin Newsom down in California, have all instituted uh, lockdown measures again. So shutting down in-person dining at restaurants, strict limits on retail uh, capacity in stores, uh, closed pretty much all forms of indoor recreation, uh, universal masking requirements, very strict limits on weddings, uh, funerals, church attendance. Uh, you know, can't can't sing in church again. Uh, and then a lot of talk about limiting Thanksgiving and holiday gatherings. It's it's very, very strict uh, lockdown measures that we're facing again out here on the West Coast. And that seems to be a, a little bit symbol, symbolic of what's happening all across the country. We just saw New York, for example, as well, their decision to close down schools. Uh, people in Chicago as well uh, woke up last week to find out that there's additional restrictions taking place there. But when it comes to California, I'll focus on that one for now. The Orange County Sheriff said that they would not be enforcing the at-home orders. So generally, is, does local law enforcement have this type of power to say whether or not they're going to enforce these types of orders from the governor? Yeah, absolutely they do. And, you know, local law enforcement on a, on a normal uh, basis has to make decisions about how to prioritize its resources. Uh, no law enforcement agency has the ability to strictly enforce every law all the time. And so you're seeing a lot of uh, an increasing number of these local law enforcement officials officials come out and say they're just not interested in using their resources, chasing people down in their homes for having, uh, you know, over the, the limited number of visitors there for Thanksgiving or, or enforcing some of these very, very strict and, and uh, to be frank, absurd in some cases, uh, edicts from the governor's offices. And, you know, I think it's just really hard for people to stomach uh, the, the increase and, in, in, you know, this perception of going backwards into these lockdowns again. When the government officials themselves, uh, unfortunately, are not showing a great willingness to abide by the rules. You know, we had Governor Gavin Newsom eating at a high-priced French restaurant with the lobbyists from the healthcare industry indoors. Uh, news this week about state legislators going on golf trips to Hawaii. Meanwhile, telling their citizens, uh, you can't have Thanksgiving with your family and their businesses. You can't open. You have to shut down. It's, it's, it's a lot for people to take. And what makes this even more difficult for a lot of families is that they're being told to close down their business. Uh, right now, Congress is at a stalemate regarding any additional PPP funds or stimulus checks, whatever it may be. At least the first time, that was some form of assistance for a lot of these people, even if it was very short term. And there's still a debate as to question how effectiveness a stimulus check is, for example. But right now, a lot of people are being asked once again to close down their shops, do not make an income, and then figure it out on their own. Does this present a constitutional or legal argument as to whether or not that is even possible? Well, it absolutely presents all sorts of legal issues. And the Freedom Foundation has lawsuits underway on behalf of businesses uh, up and down the West Coast that are being affected by these orders. Uh, and, and, you know, to go into this again a second time with these lockdowns is really going to it's going to be the end for many businesses, many small businesses, unfortunately. You know, 19,000 businesses in California had already shut down as of September, according to Yelp's analysis. And our hospitality industry out here in Washington state was estimating about 100,000 restaurant jobs lost. And that was all before these, this latest round of lockdowns was announced. So this presents a very, very uh, direct threat to our economy. Uh, to a lot of our small business owners. And the Freedom Foundation is doing what we can to fight back. There's, there's a lot of constitutional and, and legal questions around the governor's ability to just uh, uh, run an entire state by edict, mm. uh, which is what we're seeing on the West Coast. So it takes a while for these cases to process through the courts, but we are, we are trying our best to lead the fight and, and help out some of these small businesses that, that may not continue to exist if uh, current trends hold. And Max, small businesses are bearing the brunt of this because a lot of the money, Amazon, for example, is staying open, Walmart is staying open, those essential businesses. But for those small businesses, for example, that are forced to close down, if there were to be a legal decision that came down that said, for example, that Governor Gavin Newsom does not have this type of authority, I know that would provide a sort of equitable type of relief for a lot of these people, allowing them to open up their businesses once again. But what about those funds that are lost? What about those businesses that were forced to close down? Is there any relief for them? 
Well, we haven't raised an, an argument like that in any of our cases. I, I don't know if any of the other lawsuits out there uh, are, are going in that direction and trying to seek monetary compensation from the state as a result of these closures. Uh, but as a as a practical matter, you know that would be that would be very difficult to do. Yeah. You know, people have to remember that the government doesn't uh, have its own source of funds. It goes out and it tax taxes these same individuals who have lost their jobs or these same businesses that are struggling to keep their doors open. That's the source of tax revenue. So. Uh, you know, at this, on one hand, the government the government is shutting down its its revenue source uh, by shutting down these businesses, and that's that's going to present some some very interesting uh, fiscal difficulties when these states have to go meet their budgets next session. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I think out here on the West Coast, there's going to be a lot of talk about increasing taxes uh, on these very small businesses that are having such a hard time keeping the doors open right now. It's it's just a nightmare of a situation for these folks trying to keep our economy afloat. Yeah, and I appreciate what you and your organization are doing, too, because right now the immediacy for a lot of these families is making sure that they can get a paycheck to make sure they can put food on the table for their families and even pay rent at the end of the month. I know that there's going to be a lot of evictions probably coming up in the near future for a lot of these families as well as they're not making an income. They're being asked to pay their rent, pay taxes still. So there's a lot going on, and I appreciate your efforts on that front. Max Selson, it's a real pleasure having you on the program tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Alex.